Thank you very much, Operator. Greatly appreciate the media joining us from around the world. We hope all of you and your families are safe and sound during this worldwide pandemic of COVID-19. We get set for the second straight week from the Microsoft Theater here in Los Angeles. It is Fox PBC Fight Night on Fox FS1 and Fox Deportes, and it comes your way at 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific time. Fox PBC Fight Night is headlined by WBA Super Welterweight Champion of the World, Ed Islandi, the American Dream Laura, taking on Greg Vendetti in a 12-round main event. On today's call, we're going to hear from fighters in the main event and the co-main event now preceding Fox PBC Fight Night at 6 Eastern, 3 Pacific time is a slate of FS1 PBC Fight Night matchups. As the man who has been quite busy when it comes to promoting these events, he's been so active for such a long time, continues to churn out outstanding, wonderful, fan-friendly matchups. The president of TGB Promotions, here is Mr. Tom Brown. Thank you, Ray, and thank you, everyone, for joining us today to preview Saturday's WBA Super Welterweight Championship fight card. The 154-pound division is stacked with talent right now. There's some big super welterweight fights on the horizon for Lara, but first he's got to get past the tough Greg Vendetti. Vendetti is a legitimate guy and a guy that's going to try to test Lara, and he knows he's getting in the ring as one of the very best in the world. I'm also really looking forward to the opening fight Saturday night with Alfredo and Gulo taking on former super middleweight champion Caleb Truitz and IBF 168-pound title eliminator. So right now I'm going to get things started and throw it back to Ray. Thank you, Ray. Really appreciate it, Tom. Tom continues to be very busy when it comes to putting on events of this magnitude. But now let's meet the man involved in the cool main event of the evening. As Tom pointed out, I think this one is going to be an absolute barn burner. He comes to us fighting out of his native home state of Minnesota, became a world champion by going to England and upsetting James DeGale and capture the IBF title in what the media called one of 2017's the biggest upsets, but with the hard work and dedication he put in, no surprise to me, he's faced an impressive resume of top middleweights and super middleweights, including the likes of James DeGale, Peter Quill, and Anthony Durrell, and Daniel Jacobs. A fan friendly style works so tirelessly in the gym and is a wonderful representation for the sport of boxing. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Caleb Golden Truex. Caleb? Hey, thanks for the kind words, Ray. Uh, great to be here and uh, excited for the, the fight card on, on Saturday, just like everybody else is. And now we will open it up to the media. If you have any questions for Caleb Golden Truex as he prepares for his eliminator matchup against Alfredo Angulo this upcoming Saturday night, 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific time. All right, ladies and gentlemen, if you have any questions, please press star 1 on your telephone keypad. Again, that's star 1 on your telephone keypad. Now, allow just a few moments for the queue to build. All right, our first question will come from Jeremy Harridge of fansided.com. Jeremy, your line is now open. Hi, Caleb. Thank you for, for taking the time to talk with us today. Um, I know that in, in uh, last year you, you were having numerous issues with your Achilles. I was wondering what's the status of your Achilles now? Is it fully healed? And, and how has that been during training? Uh, thanks for the question, Jeremy. Yeah, uh, last year, uh, the last year and a half was a tough year for me. I got that cut and the Achilles injury, and uh, it's, it's fully healed now. Uh, it took about Eight, eight or nine months to, uh, to, for it to feel back to normal, um, but uh, I've been training on it. Uh, I fought in January. It felt fine, and uh, it's fully healed now, so uh, I'm ready to roll. I know that your your fight in January was closer than a lot of people expected against Basa, Basa Um Was there ring rust at that time? Did you feel like you needed that fight to kind of get back into the swing of things? What was your assessment of how you felt in the ring at that time? Yeah, uh, I had a little bit of ring rust, and uh, it, it was great to knock it off. But at the same time, the, I don't know what the judges were thinking because uh, everybody, uh, most people there thought it was like a, 
uh, eight to two fight, and and uh, the judges had it closer than that, but uh, uh, I got the win and and knocked out some ring rust. So uh, just moving forward and uh, ready to uh, go out and, and put on a show against uh, a higher level of competition, obviously in Alfredo and Gulo. Um, last question. Uh, obviously, Alfredo Angulo maximized his, his fight with, with Peter Quillen uh, since you weren't able to participate in it. Um, looking at that fight, um, were you impressed with Alfredo's performance, and, and were you surprised by it at all? Uh, yeah, I was impressed for sure. Um, I, I, I don't think surprise is the right word because, you know, he's a former champion. He's a veteran. He's a, he's a real good fighter. Um, I, I favored Quillen to win like, like most everybody else. But um, obviously, when you have that pedigree that Angulo has, it's not a surprise that he that he won. Uh, I thought he rightfully uh, got the decision and and put pressure on Quillen and, and backed him up pretty much the whole night uh, outside of the first couple of rounds and and did what he had to do to to get the win. Well, Caleb, thank you for your time and, and best of luck come Saturday. Thanks, Drew. All right, our next question will come from Carlos Toro of Fight Game Media. Carlos, your line is now open. Hey, Caleb. Thanks so much for taking time to talk to us. You know, obviously, you have been in a position to fight for the IBF uh, in an IBF title eliminator, so to speak, for quite some time. Uh, was, but ever since that fight against Peter Quinlan kind of went to a no decision, it's been kind of like a, a long waiting game for you to sort of get back to this point where you could fight in a title eliminator. Has that weight kind of been... Uh, a, a little off-putting, or I should say, a little hard for you. Uh, it's been frustrating uh, having to deal with first the cut and then the the Achilles injury. Uh, it's basically the first major injury I've had in my you know 13 year career, so that was a little bit uh, frustrating. Um, but uh, I'm fortunate uh, to be in the spot that I am now, and and the IBF kept me rated at I think I believe number three. So uh, that's where we're at today in this eliminator and. I just need to make the most of it and get back in a get back in a uh, title fight. All right, so when you're looking at this fight, obviously both of you guys are in your 30s, and you got a champion in Caleb Plant, who's obviously going strong in his career right now. Do you look at this fight and kind of think to yourself that you kind of have to treat this more or less as your last shot at potentially gunning for that super middleweight title? Yeah, you know. I've been I've been treating probably the last three or four fights the same way just because when you get as old as Angulo, Angulo and I are, uh, we don't really have time to start over and build again and work our way back up. So uh, it's, it's uh, when you're 36 years old or I think I believe he's 38, uh, you you have to approach every fight like it's uh, uh, a must win, like last chance opportunity. I think. Thanks, Caleb, and best of luck on Saturday. Thanks, Carlos. And ladies and gentlemen, once again, if you have any questions, please press star 1 on your telephone keypad. Again, that's star 1 on your telephone keypad for questions. Caleb, I have a question for you, and in regards to your your style, the one thing that I can classify with you is you love to come forward. You like to throw punches in bunches. Where do you get your fan-friendly style from? Because I'm sure your coaches would rather have you a uh, boss and make things easier, but I feel like you just have that you know, something inside of you that you want to come forward and put on an exciting show for the fans. You know what? I, I actually uh, I can point to an exact fight where it changed, where I, I used to be more of a counter puncher and uh, kind of sit back and, and try to box. Um, but when I fought Jermaine Taylor, uh, it was like my first, uh, big fight, first fight against a guy that was uh, on the level of, uh, you know, a, a former world champion and on the top level of the sport. And I sat back too long and, and tried to counter. And after that fight, we kind of reinvented my style, knowing that I just I couldn't sit back and wait for, for guys that were that quick and that experienced and that good. Uh, you know, you have to be first. And and uh, I kind of uh, consider myself like a, like an aggressive counter puncher where uh, I'll come forward and, and throw punches and get the guy moving backwards or get him frustrated and then, then sit back and wait for counter opportunities when he tries to make uh, something happen. So uh, 
that that fight is what really kind of switched my style. Well, also, too, Caleb, you've been around and fighting for over a decade. You've seen boxing evolve. When being a part of Premier Boxing Champions and watching the movement of being having boxing back on network television, can you tell us what you've seen when it comes to the growth of the sport, thanks largely in part to what PBC has been able to do? Yeah, I love it, man. Uh, having having boxing on network television is, is huge for the fighters, huge for the fans, and, and huge for the sport in general just because uh, it opens up avenues of, of viewership that, that a lot of people don't have, you know, like uh, not everybody has HBO or, or Showtime or or, or uh, uh, wants to download an app for uh, for streaming purposes. So uh, when I can go tell somebody that, uh, uh, hey, I got a fight coming up, and, oh, is it on pay-per-view? Nope, it's on Fox 9. Really? Ooh, I'll, I'll tune in for sure. You know, it's, it makes it easier for people to, to access the fights and, and uh Hopefully, uh, lots of people tune in to, to my fight on Saturday, and, and we start getting the, the viewership uh, numbers up all across the boxing. You fought literally the top tier at 168 and 160. Do you like the fact that you are going to be fighting someone in Alfredo Angulo that you're probably not going to have to you know chase around the ring or have to cut off the ring because... You know, he likes to come forward and throw punches and bunches. You like to do the same as well, a calculated aggression. But do you, does that kind of excite you for Saturday night? Yeah, I uh, I think my style matches up really well with him. I, I like it when uh, I don't have to go searching for somebody, and, and uh, uh, I think it will make for a good fight for the fans as well. So I'm excited to, to fight a guy that is going to want to come forward because I haven't fought anybody like that for a while. You and I spoke about this on the PBC Instagram page yesterday, but for the media that hasn't been able to check that out, I want to know your thoughts on having that world title opportunity literally within a grasp of you and the champion being Kayla Plant. You know, in terms of your mindset preparing for Angulo and not necessarily, um, you know, putting all your attention away from Angulo, but looking ahead towards Caleb Plant as well. What has that balancing act been like for you? Uh, well, I've uh, I've made it a point uh, throughout my career, and especially since since I won my title against James McGill, where I thought he overlooked me, uh, I've made it a point not to do that and, and look forward. I, I always focus on the person uh, that's, that's right in front of me. Uh, obviously, whoever wins this fight gets that opportunity in the future. Um, so you kind of have to acknowledge that. But at the same time, I that none of that happens unless I beat Angulo. So uh, I, I try to try to try my best not to not to look past um, what I have in front of me on Saturday night. Well, Caleb, we greatly appreciate your time. And, you know, you are within the PBC bubble right now, getting you ready for your matchup against Alfredo Angulo, co-made event. It is a super middleweight eliminator matchup this Saturday night, 8 Eastern, 7 o'clock local time for Caleb Truex's fans in Minnesota, 5 Pacific time. Do you have any final comments, Caleb, as you prepare for your co-main event showdown? Uh, just thanks for all the support from all my uh, people back in Minnesota, and, and uh, thank, to, thank everybody for all the questions, and, and thank TGB, uh, PBC, Al Heyman for, for the opportunity. Uh, my team, Tony G, Second Out Promotions, my my trainers and uh, uh, manager, and uh, I'm just uh, just ready to roll, man. I'm uh, excited to uh, get back into a big fight uh, and uh, get on TV and and do my thing. Caleb, thanks so much for your time. We appreciate it. Good luck on Saturday. Thanks, Ray. Caleb Truax joining us, and now we will turn our attention to the main event of the evening. In regards to the challenger, he represents his hometown of Stoneham, Massachusetts. He's won back-to-back -back victories since a defeat at the hands of Michelle Zorro back in 2018 in France. Now, prior to the fight with Zorro, he won 16 straight, including a heck of a barn burner back in 2018 against Yoshihiro Kabagai. His record, 22 wins, three losses, one draw. A dozen wins coming by way of knockout. The one thing I will tell you about this man, 
He always comes prepared, always in tip-top shape, right. and is scared of nobody. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the challenger on a Saturday night from Massachusetts. Here is Greg Vendetti. Greg. Hey, what's happening, guys? Thanks for having me. Greg, if you have any opening comments as you get set to battle, Arizlan Laura in the main event of PBC Fight Night. Um, I mean, uh, I think we've done all we can to prepare for this fight. Uh, this, every box is checked. Um, I'm definitely in a position to do my best, and I'm really excited for it and excited for the opportunity. And uh, I think we got it, man. Real confident. I'm excited. And now we will turn it over to the operator as the media. If you have any questions for Greg Vendetti, who prepares to square off against Edislandi Lada this Saturday night here in Los Angeles. Operator? Ladies and gentlemen, please press star one if you have any questions. Again, that's star one for questions. And our first question will come from Jeremy Harridge of fansided.com. Jeremy, your line is now open. Hi, Greg. Thank you for taking the time to talk. Um, obviously, you know, the pandemic is provides a lot of time to sit and wait. What were your first thoughts when you got the call that, that hey, do you want this Arizlandi Laura fight? Take me to that moment. What was running through your head? Uh, yeah, I mean, it was just words are hard to describe uh you know it's something that my my trainer was uh kind of predicting for for a while now almost close to three years that i you know he would see larry like ah you know this guy you know he's he, he doesn't like backing up he's got a good style for him and uh you know he don't like pressure and blah 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 like i see you fighting this guy and then i got the call and i don't know i took it as a real sign so yeah i was really excited really motivated to uh show everyone what i can do and and uh do my best so yeah when when going up against a guy like Laura, obviously he's he's kind of hit legendary status now. Um, is there any intimidation there? Is there any sense of awe, or is it uh, kind of what's your your vision when you go into this fight? How what's your attitude like? Uh, well, you know, I I look at it like he's just you know he's a he's a human just like me, man. He's made of skin and bones and and blood and meat and all that. And then, you know, he has his doubts about himself too, you know, his age and his ability and all, oh, what if this kid gets to me and blah, blah, blah. Like all those things are going through his head too. So as far as intimidation goes, I have, no, nah, I'm not really, I'm not really, I mean, what's the worst that could happen? I die. Like it's, you know, it is what it is, but um, mm -hmm. I, I look, I'm more excited just to be able to get in there and test myself against one of the best fighters of our generation of, or even the last like decade really, you know? So Considering that this is a title fight and, and so many, obviously, you've worked very hard to get this point, is there any pressure that, hey, this could be my one shot, I need to make the most of it, or do you tend not to look at it that way? Um, no, I don't, I, don't, I don't really look at it that way. I just look at it like prepare the best I can and perform the best I can in the fight, and that's all I can do. That's it. That's it. I can't do anything else. Um, is it? May it be the last opportunity I have for a fight for a title? Yeah, maybe. But I, thinking of that's not going to help anything. So just prepare my best, focus, do my best in the fight. You do that, you know, I got a good shot of winning. Last question here for me. Um, after this fight, after it's all over, what do you think people are going to say about you? What do you want to show them in this fight? Um. I'm in it to win it, man. You know, that's something I, I, I feel like I've, all, I've built a reputation for myself that people, um, spectators see that I'm, there's no giving up in me and that I'll do anything I can to win the fight. And, uh, if I lose, I, you know, I want to, I want to lose falling on my face, going down swinging, you know what I mean? So that's really all, all I'm looking to, looking to get people to think is, uh, yeah, there's, there's no giving up in me, man. Greg, thank you so much, and, and best of luck come Saturday. Thank you, sir. All right, our next question will come from Marquis John. Marquis, your line is now open. Thanks uh, for taking the call, uh, everybody. Greg, how are you doing today, sir? Hey, what's going on, man? Pretty good, man. Uh, two things, actually. Uh, you mentioned the opening statements with uh, Ray, uh, you, that you preparing for this fight with Laura. You checked all the boxes. 
The last fight Laura had was uh, two rounds of Ramon Alvarez. Is there any preparation you took from that fight to prepare for this one or anything in particular? Uh, no, not much. I mean, you know, I'm not going to speak ill of anybody, but it seemed like uh, Alvarez was in there just to get a paycheck. He didn't seem very motivated to uh, win that fight. Or, uh, I mean, you could see that even him not making weight. So you could you, you could see that, you know, he kind of stood there. He stood at the end of um, Lara's uh, range, and Lara could just kind of put punches on him and catch him. So, I, you know, if anything I take from that is that that's what I shouldn't do. Uh, but even him himself, like even when he came forward, he still got to Lara and put a little burst on him at, at moments. So that kind of showed me that even a, a unmotivated, maybe not even in shape fighter can still get to Lara. Uh, so that kind of, I don't know, maybe gave me a boost of confidence. Understood. And uh, I, I blame speaking to you a while back previously about this. Uh, your your goal was to win this fight against Laura to eventually avenge your loss against Michael Soro. Can you walk me through that again? Uh, yeah, that's something that could possibly be in the cards. Uh, you know, obviously, I don't want to, nothing set in stone. But, um, you know, if that opportunity arose for him to come over here uh, to the States and preferably fight him at the Boston Garden, that'd be like, Man, I mean, what's sweeter than that type of revenge in front of your home crowd? Mm -hmm. So that's definitely something that we could potentially get into. But, of course, it's, you know, things change and different opportunities pop up. So you kind of got to just go with what's the best decision at the time. Absolutely. Uh, one last question for me just in general, uh, uh, Greg. Uh, any particular uh, feeling of the atmosphere that's going to be at the Microsoft Theater this Saturday night? Because, you know, with, no, there's no fans. It's just the studio premiere. It's just you and just uh, Laura in the ring. Any, any, <laughs> any preparation for it? Uh, yeah, it's going to be a little strange. I, I feel like it's, uh, I'm not worried about it. If anything, I feel like it's going to help. I mean, it's going to allow uh, me to focus better. And, and, you know, like I've said in the past, the crowd does, even though it doesn't matter how much experience you have, I mean, the crowd does have an effect on your performance. Uh, it can uh, make you more aggressive than you want to be or, or, you know, can influence the judges in many ways. So I feel not having a crowd there is probably more in my advantage. Uh, than disadvantage, but it is going to have a weird muffled feeling, you know, just b being a couple people in the room. So, but eh, it is what it is. Wild times, man. Absolutely. Uh, thanks for your time, Greg. Of course, man. I appreciate it. And our next question will come from Michael Rosenthal of Boxing Junkie. Michael, your line is now open. Hi, thanks. Uh, you kind of just alluded to this a little bit. Um, do you think that maybe Lara slipped a little bit? Maybe he's really in decline to some degree? Um, now, I, I'm, I've approached this fight as if I'm getting the best version of Lara that has ever existed. So I definitely didn't um, – I'm not taking him lightly by no means at all. I mean, he's a great fighter, and he definitely, like I've said, he's probably one of the best in the last 10 years. But if you kind of see his performance uh, as of late, it's not the same Lara you've seen early on when he fought uh, Angulo and Canelo in those earlier fights when he was in his early 30s. Uh, that lateral movement is kind of lacking. The agility is not there as much. And it almost seems like he, he does he's doing just enough to, to win these fights. He's not really going the extra, uh, extra mile or the extra push to really um, – uh, you know, dominate or anything. He's kind of almost doing just enough. So, yeah, I don't know. I mean, he's, he's an older guy. He's a little long in the tooth. So we'll, we'll see. We'll see. But I, I'm approaching it as in as if he's the best he's ever been. So I'm, I'm ready for him either way. Great. Uh, I hadn't seen the Soro fight until a couple of days ago. I watched it on tape, and uh, that was a pretty bad knockout. I'm just curious. How do you how do you bounce back from that? Like, I guess emotionally more than physically. Uh, yeah, well, I mean, as far as emotionally, I just look at it like, yeah, I mean, that's, that's, that's the risk you take, you know, fighting a uh, world-class elite fighters. Um, I knew that going into the fight, it wasn't, uh, you know, that was totally, um, you know, calculated into making the decision, but, you know, I look at it like this, like if I'm, I'm in this to win this, you know, I want to do the best I can and fight the best guys I can. Uh, I don't want to just say that I want to be the best, like I want to really be the best I can. So, yeah, it's, 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 it is what it is, man. It's sometimes you're the hammer, sometimes you're the nail, and in that case, I was the nail. What can you do? <laughs> awesome. Good answer. Thanks very much. Good luck. Appreciate it, man. All right. Our next question will come from Adriana Jimenez. Adriana, your line is now open. 
Hey, Griff, thanks for taking the time to talk to us. I um, oh, just wanted to course. see if you can put into words. Um, obviously, it's been um, a year now since you were in the ring. We've had the pandemic. Mm -hmm. We've had uh, fighters get um, their training caps affected because of COVID. Is, was there any change, anything drastically different in your training camp uh, because of, of all this pandemic? Um, yeah, things have changed slightly, but to tell you the truth, it hasn't impacted me in a very big negative way. Uh, with everything closing down and shutting down, I mean, I've had, you know, layoffs and, and not as much work available, but I mean, I've had a lot of money saved. And, and so it kind of gave me more time to even focus on training even more. And, um, with all the social distancing, it kind of gave me a good excuse to, uh, you know, not have to go out and see anybody so I could even focus more on training. And, um, you know, it was a little difficult at times to get sparring, but a lot of the guys that we ended up getting were also having fights around the same time I'm having mine. So they all, they were basically all in the same boat as me as far as getting tested and, you know, being cleared. So to tell you the truth, it's actually kind of worked out. You know, I've had a lot more time and a, and a lot more energy to train and put into this camp. So, yeah, it's been a positive to tell you the truth. Okay, well, it's good to hear that. Now, you mentioned right mm. now, um, you mentioned layoffs. Do you, um, besides boxing, do you, do you have a day-to-day a -day job that you do that as well? Yeah, yeah. I, I teach a couple of little boxing classes, some fitness classes at a couple of uh, local gyms. And um, I'm also a, a licensed plumber, so I do, like, uh, my own jobs and side jobs and things like that. But, yeah, that's really, yeah, that's really it. Just kind of put around with that stuff. Okay, okay, yeah, I had seen, um, I, I thought the plumbing, you had stopped, but okay, so you're, you're still doing the plumbing. Um, also, can you put into words what fans can expect from you, both if they're not too familiar from you, you know, what, what can we expect you to see from you? Uh, what do you have to do to come out victorious on Saturday? Um, I mean, pressure is the name of the game. I got to be, you know, I, I got to be aggressive. I got to be active. I got to put pressure on them. Uh, methodically, of course, you know, I can't run in and uh, be a sucker and get blasted. But yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to push the pace as, uh, as best I can, as smart as I can. So it's, um, I'm predicting an exciting fight, at least on my end. Sounds good. Thank you so much. Good luck, Greg. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Our final question will come from Carlos Toro of Fight Game Media. Carlos, your line is now open. Hey, Greg, uh, thanks for taking time to talk to us. You know, uh, of most of the questions we kind of wanted to ask have already been asked already, but I do wanted to ask, obviously, boxing during this time has been very unpredictable. It's, uh, on fight day, things have, you know, are drastically different than what it was pre-pandemic. I even had one fighter tell me that he even listened to the commentary in the middle of his fight just for kind of like time cues of like when there's a minute left. Have you sort of kind of taken uh, a chance to sort of look at some of these boxing shows with no uh, crowd just to sort of get a, a feel or, or, or a mental idea of what you might expect come Saturday? Uh, yeah, I've, I've watched a few fights, but it's, uh, it's, I, I, I don't think I'm going to, it's going to have a negative impact on me. Uh, I, I feel that um, I'm very present at the time of the fight. I'm very focused in the moment of the fight almost to the point where I don't even really remember my fights after they're done. I'm so present in the moment that I kind of don't even register what's happening. It's, it's kind of odd, but uh, no, I'm not, I don't, I don't uh, predict it being a, a problem. I, I think if anything, it's going to help. You know, obviously since the Michael Soro fight, you've had a couple of impressive dominant decision victories heading into this fight, but going back to the Michael Soro fight, have you sort of taken something away from that fight as far as, needing to work on something stylistically or something with, with your fundamentals as far as boxing is concerned? Um, yeah, I mean, absolutely. Every, I feel, um, you know, in the fight you learn a lot, but the most you learn is really in the camp. And uh, that wasn't one of my better camps. I mean, hey, there's no excuses. I'm not trying to make any excuses or anything like that. But it's uh, overtraining is definitely a, a thing. Like, that's something that actually happens. So I w didn't have really the best body or the best mindset going into that fight. Uh, so I, I learned a lot from that and how to prepare for, um, you know, 12 rounders in those long fights. And um, as far as the actual fight went, you know, it wasn't 
those first two rounds weren't weren't going too bad. You know, I'll tell you the truth, I I think I even won that first round. But uh, yeah, you know, obviously tighten up the defense a little bit more and and um, kind of just being aware of like, oh, I can actually get dropped because that's never happened before in a fight or in sparring or anything ever. So. I kind of always felt like I was a little invincible. So that kind of was like, oh, okay, it's a little piece of humble pie, which forces me to tighten up my defense a little bit more and be a little bit more conscious of the defense. So it's a learning experience, but I think it's definitely helped me in the long run. Thanks, Greg. Best of luck on Saturday. I appreciate it, man. Thank you. All right. And I want to go ahead and ask Greg if you have any final comments as you prepare for your world title opportunity this upcoming Saturday night, BBC, live on Fox, 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific time. Greg, the floor is yours. Uh, final comments. Let's see. Um, yeah, I mean, guns blazing, baby. Like, I'm, I'm excited. This is, like, the best I've ever felt. Uh, I know it's almost cliche to say, but it's the truth. Like, it's the best I've ever felt, best I've ever done, best camp I've ever had. And um, I feel like it's just – there's been so many signs in just my personal life and my boxing experience that this is this is the moment. It's, it's now. Like, this is it. So I'm really excited, and um, I'm ready to go. Thank you very much to Greg Vendetti for his time, as he is just days away from challenging Edislandi Latam for the Super Welterweight Championship. Now we turn our attention to the man in the co-main event who will be battling at Caleb Truax in an IBF Super Middleweight Eliminator matchup. Born in Mexicali, Mexico, who now lives in Coachella, California, trained under the guidance of Abel Sanchez out in Big Bear, California. Abel Sanchez, an outstanding trainer and has been a world-class trainer for a very long time. This man has been in numerous memorable matchups against the likes of Canelo Alvarez and that is Landi Lada, who incidentally happens to be in our main event. Also, having come off of a split decision of victory in September of last year against Peter Quillen, what a award that was on FS1 from Bakersfield, California. His record, 26 wins, 7 losses, 21 of those coming by way of knockout. He actually has a translator in Martin, Martin Bader to be able to do the translating for him. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the fan-friendly and the exciting Alfredo El Perro Angulo. Martin, mm -hmm. you can ask Alfredo Angulo for opening comments. Hola a todos. Acá Alfredo, te doy la palabra. Eh, si quieres, if you want to do if you want to do a, a, a question in English, feel free to ask, and then Alfredo will reply in Spanish, and then I'll translate to English. Uh, y si quieren hacer preguntas en español, uh, hagan la pregunta, Alfredo responde, uh, y después yo voy a traducir al inglés. If there, if there are Spanish questions, don't worry, I will be translating both the question and the answer to English. So, Alfredo, please feel free to, uh, to go, así, cuando quieras, Alfredo. Thank you so much, everything, everybody. Thank you so much for for this conference, and I appreciate everybody your time. Uh, now we want to turn it over to the operator um, for questions. All right, of course, uh, ladies and gentlemen. At this time, please press star one on your telephone keypad for questions. Again, that's star one for questions. I'll just allow a few moments for the queue to build. And our first question will come from Adriana Jimenez. Adriana, your line is now open. Hola, perro. ¿Cómo estás? Gracias por platicar con nosotros de nuevo. Este, quería preguntar sobre eh, si ganas esta pelea, eres el mandatorio para Caleb Plant. Y sabemos que Canelo está, eh, quizás va a pelear por el título del CMB. Y has mencionado que te gustaría una pelea con él de nuevo. Si me puedes platicar un poquito más de eso. Um, I asked him that if he wins, to become the mandatory for Caleb Plant. And there's talk about Canelo fighting for the WBC title that's now vacant. And he has mentioned interest about a rematch with them. If you can just talk a little bit about that. Pues yo creo que, que una, una pelea 
muy muy interesante primero tenemos que tenemos que ahorita en mi cabeza está la pelea del sábado primeramente Dios y, y saliendo todo bien pues ya Dios Dios dirá si me gustaría enfrentar a, a Canelo pero yo creo que ahorita es ganar el sábado primeramente Dios y, y ya como te digo Dios dirá que que viene para nosotros creo que sería una pelea muy interesante una revancha entre Canelo Álvarez y yo Uh, well, what Alfredo was saying is that first things first, gotta focus on Saturday. God willing, everything is gonna be okay. For, uh, first things with God every time. And gotta focus on Saturday first. Whatever comes next, including a, possi a possibility of fighting Canelo in the future, then that will be a consequence of, of the job I do on Saturday. But it's really about the fight this Saturday, which will be very interesting and it will be a compelling challenge for me. Y perro, ya okay. tienes unas peleas eh, con Abel Sánchez y has mencionado que es como si Abel tiene eh, el secreto como para rejuvenecer, para re rejuvenecerte. Eh, te sientes eh, lo mejor, te sientes eh, en la mejor condición que has estado en, en mucho tiempo. Um, He's been training with Abel Sanchez for a while, and he has mentioned about Abel Sanchez having a fountain of youth kind of power over him. And I'm, I'm asking him if he feels um, in the best condition he's felt in, in a while in his career. Yo creo que, que sí, que me siento muy, muy contento. Yo le dije que le tuve que sacar a, a, a relucir que Evo tiene la, la fuente, la juventud ahí en Big Bear. Este, me siento rejuvenecido, muy contento y, y, y feliz y con las ganas de, de seguir uh, dándole buen espectáculo a los fans. It really is like a fountain of youth. I feel, I feel rejuvenated. I feel like the clock has turned back. And all I want to do now is give the fans a great show. That's my focus. Adri, uh, thank you very much for making my job twice as easy. So thank you very much uh, for translating the, no. the question. Muchas gracias. No problem. Gracias, perro. Thank you. Fuerte. Oh, gracias. Also, want to go ahead and let everyone know that I was told that we have Abel Sanchez on the call as well, the esteemed trainer for Alfredo El Perro Angulo. So Abel Sanchez is on the call. If you have any questions, for the esteemed trainer as well, both Pedro Angulo and Abel Sanchez making for a wonderful team. Once again, back to the operator for questions from the media. Yes, perfect. So again, if you have any questions, that's star one on your telephone keypad. I'll now turn things over to Michael Rosenthal, a boxing junkie. Michael, your line is now open. Hey, guys. Hey, guys. Um, actually, I'd love to direct this to uh, Abel Sanchez. Abel, you, are you there right now? Yes, I am here. Hey, how you doing? Yes, I am. Yes, I am. I'm doing well. How are you, Michael? Good, good, good. Thanks. Um, I was going to ask Alfredo this, and maybe I can ask you both. Um, you know, he was, you know, he was the underdog against Quillen, I think, because he had, you know, he had a couple losses. He had two really long breaks away from boxing, and so people were thinking he's pretty much done. What do you think changed for him that allowed him to perform as well as he did against Quillen? I think they would put him in a situation where there was no pressure on him. There was no uh, um, anybody watching him up in Big Bear. He's uh, training. Uh, with a bunch of other very good fighters, uh, he's his motivation changed. Uh, he really wanted to to show everybody that in in my gym anyway that uh, that he still had something left. It's it's an ego thing, I guess, up there for everybody. And uh, his motivation changed. And once he started getting in shape, and once he started doing things that he had hadn't done in a while physically, uh, was able to do those things. I, I think everything in, in clicked clicked in that he could still do this. Hmm. Maybe we can ask the same question to Alfredo and see what he thinks. Uh, could you repeat the question, please? Yeah, uh, he was uh, the underdog against Quillen, I think, because he had a couple losses and he had these two really long breaks away from boxing. Um, so I'm just trying to explain exactly why he looked so good against Quillen. What changed for him that allowed that to happen? Bueno, vos, eh, vos eras como el que venía, el, el que era el punto contra contra Quell y, y además venías de un par de, 
de derrotas bastante duras y lo que y lo que Michael quiere saber es cómo hiciste para reinventarte, para rejuvenecerte, para volver a tener esa confianza en ti mismo que, que luego se convirtió en la receta de tu éxito. Yo creo que el, el trabajo al lado de de Evo ha sido un trabajo muy bueno el el nivel el nivel que hay en el Saber Gym de de todos los peleadores que que estamos ahí es muy bueno y yo creo que uh, vamos como aprendiendo y retándonos uno uno desde la corrida no no por mal sino a ver quién llega primero la uno tratando de superarse a uno mismo como como peleador y yo creo que más que nada la, la confianza que que Evo te, te transmite como como entrenador y como persona yo creo que ha sido parte muy fundamental en en mi cambio well, Michael, uh, first of all The biggest key for him is that the confidence and the input that Evo uh, gives him each and every day when, when they train is the biggest thing for him. If you want a key to the turnaround, that's that's the biggest thing. The confidence, the the, the input, the the advice that Evo is able to to give Perro, and it's and then it's also about being at the gym every day and being challenged by fighters that have that same ambition that he does and they challenge each other they push each other to to surpass their own limits to get to to new heights and it's not about trying to hurry or see who, seeing who gets to a tail uh, fight first no it's about trying to make each other better and the level at the gym he trains at is really outstanding so between those two things is the real reason as to why he has been able to turn it around like he has. Fantastic. Thanks, guys. Thanks a lot, Martin. Good to hear your voice. Uh, good to hear you, too. <laughs> All right. Our next question will come from Jeremy Harridge at fansided.com. Jeremy, your line is now open. Hi, Alfredo. Hi, Abel. Um, this first question I'm actually going to direct it towards uh, Abel. Uh, Abel, I, I know a lot of people were, were probably looking in 2016, 2018 at Alfredo and saying, okay, um, he might be done at this point. What did you see in him that you thought, you know what, I think I can breathe new life into him? Well, actually, his manager, uh, who was his wife, and Pedro went up to uh, uh, to Big Bear after trying to contact me for about four or five months and they weren't able to get a hold of me. Uh, they went up there to see if uh, if I would be interested in, in taking a look at him. Uh, I told him that I'd give him three to four weeks, which is what I usually do, thinking that uh, at his stage and what uh, what you guys have mentioned, uh, he didn't look too good in previous fights. I thought that maybe he'd last three or four weeks in my gym uh, because it's difficult up there, and then uh, he'd uh, he'd go away. Uh, uh, but uh, to Perro's credit, uh, he made those three weeks a real a real pleasure for me seeing somebody try as hard as he did. And once he got into shape, it was just no holding him back. Now it's competition with the rest of the guys in the gym. And, and uh, little by little, he understood the system that we, that we try to implement up there. Uh, everybody's on their own. Everybody's on an honor, honor system up there. Everybody does for, for themselves what they need to do for themselves. And, and, and they push each other. It may not be by words, but it's by deeds. So uh, as it got, now it's almost two years, or actually it has been two years. Um, he just seems to be uh, getting younger. Uh, it seems that instead of growing old, he's getting younger on me. He's uh, asking for things that uh, uh, that I try to hold him back because of his. Uh, of his I'm not going to say he's old, but because of his age, I just have to treat, treat him a little bit different than I do the younger guys. But uh, uh, he never complains, always on time, and and that's that's a plus for a coach. Uh, follow up to you, Abel. Um, you, you talked about the physical end of things, and he also talked about the mental aspect of things, that, that you give him an extreme amount of confidence. Um, how much of what you do working as a boxing coach, uh, maybe in general or even specifically with Alfredo, um, is also one part psychologist in building a self-esteem within a fighter? Well, I think that it's, it, that's the major part of it, not only with him but with, with all the fighters. Uh, I think I try to uh, – I don't ask him to do anything that I won't do or I won't show him what I can't do. 
maybe not at the level that they do it, but uh, once once I ask them to do something uh, and they continuously do it and, and, and get it correctly, uh, I try to encourage and I try to make sure that they understand. I videotape everything that we do so that I can go back and show them, see, this is what you were doing before and this is what we're, we're doing now and this is how much better it's getting. I can go back on a library six months, let's just say, and show them a video of what they, how they used to do it and how they're doing it now. And when we have success, not only from him, but from everybody else in the gym, that right there is a motivating factor. That that right there tells them that maybe we're doing something right. So that right there is also a mental, the mental part of it too. But I think it's very, very important to make sure that he understands that he's progressing. A uh, question for Alfredo. Um, back in January, obviously, uh, Caleb Truex had a fight. It was a close fight by many observers. Um, I was wondering if you saw that fight and if you had an assessment of what you saw in Caleb Truax in this previous fight. Eh, la pregunta es fácil. ¿Viste la pelea de Truax en enero? Y si la viste, ¿qué observaciones, qué tipo de, de apuntes eh, tienes sobre, sobre esa pelea y sobre Truax como, como boxeador? No, la verdad no, no, no la miré. No, no, no. no. No me di cuenta de esa pelea, pero um, muy independientemente de verla o no verla, yo creo que, que Truax es un es un muy buen peleador. Yo creo que el sábado va a ser uh, muy interesante la pelea entre Truax y, y Angulo porque es un peleador que también le gusta ir hacia enfrente. Así que yo creo que vamos a, a chocar esa noche de la mejor manera regalándole un buen espectáculo a los fans. Uh, to be honest with you, I didn't see the fight in January, but regardless of that, I know Truex is a great, is a great fighter, a great boxer, and he's aggressive. He's a guy that comes, that that that, that comes and tries to get you. So it's gonna be a great matchup between Truex and Angulo, and we're gonna we're gonna be offering a great spectacle to the fans that are gonna be eager to see a good fight. Alfredo, Abel, thank you very much, and best of luck on Saturday. Thank you very much. Okay, at this time, if we have any final comments from Alfredo Pedro Angulo as he prepares for his IBF Super Middleweight Eliminator matchup against Caleb Trex this upcoming Saturday night, PBC Live on Fox, 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific Time. Pedro, if you have any final comments. Alfredo, si tenés algún comentario final sobre sobre so, la, la pelea. Uh, I say thank you so much guys for the interview and um I'm ready to the Saturday and I wait till Saturday and I see you the great fight Saturday night for for the fans and thank you so much for for your time. Thank you everybody. All right, thank you very much to Oh go ahead. Sorry. Oh, no, I, was all saying, good? I, I don't think you need me to translate. Yeah, all good. Perfect. Well, thank you very much to Pedro Angulo. And now we turn our attention to the man involved in the main event of the evening. His record, 26 wins, three losses, three draws, 14 wins coming by way of knockout. He was the longest reigning super welterweight champion before losing a narrow split decision at the hands of Jared Hurd in 2018. Fight of the year in Las Vegas. He returned last March. To fight Brian Castaño, the Argentinian, to an exciting draw in a WBA title fight. He then halted Ramon Alvarez to capture the title at the end of August last year, born in Guantanamo, Cuba, and now training in Las Vegas under the guidance of Ismael Salas. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the reigning champion, Erislandi, the American Dream Lara. Erislandi. We have opening comments from Edis Landi Lada. Just awaiting the champion in Edis Landi Lada, who prepares for his matchup coming up on Saturday night against Greg Vendetti. It is the main event of PBC Live on Fox. Don't forget, we go live. At 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific time, preceding Fox PBC Fight Night, 
6 Eastern, 3 Pacific time is a full slate of FS1 PBC Fight Night matchups. All brought to you by TGB Promotions and presented by Premier Boxing Champions. As all the fighters right now are in the PBC bubble right now here in Los Angeles, making sure they are taken care of and safe and sound as they await their matchups on Saturday night. Do we have Erislandi Lara? I have um, Mario Serrano's line open. I believe he is on that line. That is Landy Mario Lada. Serrano. Guys, are you? Can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you, Mario. Do you okay. have Landy yeah, with yeah. him? Yeah, L- 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 Lara is in his. Uh, is obviously in the bubble. We've been trying to get a hold of him. I'm not sure if he called in at 12:15 or not. But we're trying to locate him right now. Give us a couple of minutes, and we're going to do our best to get him to call in right now. So bear with me. Not a problem as we await, and we thank the media for patiently waiting for Ed Islandi Lotto right now as we are in the midst of a wonderful run. Uh, three straight weeks here in Los Angeles with PBC on Fox. Last week we saw Sean Porter getting a victory over Sebastian Formella. And speaking of the super welterweight division, what an impressive performance by Sebastian Fundora last week to be able to stop Nate Gallimore in impressive fashion in the opening matchup live on Fox. Next week, another Cuban fighter will be in the main event, but this one in the welterweight division as Jordanes Ugas will go head-to-head against Abel Ramos, Jordanes Ugas' top 10 welterweight in the world. Uh, last year, Ugas suffered a split decision loss at the hands of the aforementioned Sean Porter. Some media members felt that Ugas should have been given the victory, but then he followed it up with an impressive performance by defeating Omar Figueroa on the co-main event of Pacquiao and Thurman. And as we all know, the welterweight division is one of the most floated in all of boxing, as is the super welterweight division. So much fun to see what the super welterweights are doing within the sport. You have the champions, as I mentioned, and, you know, very excited about seeing the 154-pound division shake itself out. At the end of September, you have Charlo and Rosario going at it for unification, and that is Landy Lada, you know, is going to have his sights set on that one if he's successful this Saturday against Greg Van Detti, and as we all know, you can never count out a prize fighter, despite what the odds are, especially as we are dealing with COVID-19, not the easiest to be able to train for these world-class athletes, but lo and behold, they are putting themselves in positions to fight, and a lot of coming off of a layoff for about a year now. It wasn't planned that way, but due to COVID-19, it pushed plans back, so we are efforting at his Landi Lada with a record of 26 wins, three losses, three draws, 14 wins coming by way of knockout. Uh, Lada, without a doubt, I think he has professed that he enjoys having a more crowd pleasing style, likes to make. Okay, it up guys, more. I got Lara on the phone. Lara, you Perfect. there? Perfect. Yes. Okay. Go ahead and ask Laura any questions. He's on the phone right now. Thank you. All right. We have at Islandi Lada. If you have opening comments, the champion. At his landing, opening comments as you prepare for your matchup against Greg Vendetti. Have the translator translate that question you just asked me. Do we have a translator with Edis Landi Lara? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm here, I'm here. Uh, el Islandi campeón, contanos eh, cómo te sentís para esta pelea que se viene el sábado, que seguramente se está esperando por mucho tiempo y está muy entusiasmado. <coughs> Este, nada, todo está bien, todo me siento bien, estamos, estamos ready for the fight. Uh, yeah, he says that he's feeling great and ready to roll on Saturday, so we are open to questions. All right, now oh. we will open it up to questions from the media. If you have any questions for Ed Islandi, Lada, we greatly appreciate you waiting a few more moments, but operator, open it up to questions from the media. Absolutely, ladies and gentlemen. At this time, press star 1 on your telephone keypad for question. Again, that's star 1 on your telephone keypad for question. 
I'll just allow a few moments. Looks like our first question will come from Michael Rosenthal, a boxing junkie. Michael, your line is now open. Uh, hello, Eris Landi. Um, obviously, you're not an old man, but you're you're not a kid anymore. Uh, can you still do the things that you used to do physically, or can you tell that there's a difference at this point? Que sí, obviamente ya no sos el el joven que solía ser, pero tampoco estás en una edad avanzada. Que si puedes hacer el si te sentís en la misma capacidad física que en tu plenitud. Claro, me siento bien, gracias a Dios. Me siento perfectamente en condición y me siento me siento mejor que hace como seis años atrás y he trabajado fuerte y estoy contento con el trabajo que hicimos en el campo. I I feel better than ever. I've been working hard and and staying in great shape. I actually feel even better than I did a couple of years ago. So I couldn't be feeling better and I'm and I'm ready to go for for the fight on Saturday. So the reason I asked that, or one of the reasons, is that he said he's more willing to sort of stand and fight, you know, to, to please the crowd maybe more than he has in the past. I thought that maybe that has something to do with age, but it sounds like he's saying it really doesn't. Why Why, why is he doing that? Uh, sorry, if, uh, if he was more willing to what? Sorry, you cut off there for a second. More willing to engage his opponents, willing to stand and exchange punches to please the fans. Um, I sort of assumed that that had something to do with his age. Maybe he couldn't move quite as well as he had in the past. Um, maybe you can ask if that has anything to do with it or whether he just wants to please the fans. Uh, sobre lo que declaraste hace un tiempo de que vos estás dispuesto a como intercambiar más golpes, este, como, uh, como dilatar un poco la pelea para... Eh, complacer a los fans. Eso tiene que ver con un nuevo okay. estilo de pelea tuyo, con, con una filosofía que tengas, o simplemente es que tenés ganas de, de complacer a los aficionados que pagaron por verte. Este, es, eso, tiene, eso no tiene que ver con ningún plan de pelea. Eso tiene que ver solamente con cómo con, con se, se encuentra la situación de la pelea, ¿no? La situación de la pelea en, en, en el cuadrilátero. Este y no para hacer y no para que darle una mejor pelea de fan es para pa hacer para hacer lo mejor que, que yo como yo me sienta y como yo me sienta en el ring. Uh, it's it's really and uh, it's not about any fighting style or or anything in particular it's not even it's not even about pleasing the fans per se it's about doing what is needed uh, inside the ring and what and what the fight requires requires me to do and and if it if it pleases the fans that's that's awesome but i'll always remain focused on what the fight requires me to do in each situation okay last thing for me uh obviously eris landi is one of the greatest cuban fighters of all time in terms of his success as a professional is that something that that he thinks about and and to him who's the greatest cuban professional of all time you're asking in terms of his legacy right right <laughs> So, en términos de tu en términos de tu legado, Erislandi se te considera uno de los mejores no, boxeadores mejor. cubanos de la historia. Entonces, la pregunta es, si a esta altura de tu carrera ya estás pensando en tu legado, en cómo estás en la historia del boxeo cubano y además él quiere Michael quiere saber si eh, a quién consideras el mejor boxeador cubano de la historia. Es decir, no, en mi legado, a mi edad todavía no me siento entre los, entre los mejores del cuestionario de jugando, todavía me faltan por, por hacer muchas cosas, ¿no? Y, y, y entre los mejores jugando de la historia, te puedo considerar que yo conozca, que yo que yo haya visto en, con mis ojos, igual que hasta mayor, que ha sido uno de los boxeadores cubanos que han llegado a, a este país y ha hecho muchas cosas en, en este deporte. Ah, dijiste Casa Mayor, ¿verdad? Sí. sí. Muy bien. Eh, bueno, bueno, uh, well, first of all, As far as your first part of the question about how uh, his legacy will be shaped, he's really not thinking about his legacy right now because he still feels like he has a lot to accomplish. So it's not like it crosses his mind every once in a while, but it's not something that he focuses on because there is a lot to accomplish still, and he wants to bolster his standing as, as one of the best Cuban fighters that there is. And as far as his uh, favorite Cuban, well, not his favorite, the best Cuban fighter of all time, according to him, is uh, Casamayor. Hmm. Fantastic. Great, great. Best of luck on, on Saturday. So, mucha suerte el sábado. Y gracias. Gracias, gracias. gracias. Uh, all right.
right, ladies and gentlemen, if you have another question, please press star one on your telephone keypad. Again, that's star one on your telephone keypad. And it looks like our next question will come from Jeremy Hare at JustDanceSided.com. Jeremy, your line is now open. Hi, Erislandi. Um, You were just talking about how you still feel like you have a lot of goals and a lot of things that you want to accomplish. Um, obviously, boxing is a, is a very brutal sport, um, and you've, you've you know, taken on the test of time. How much longer do you foresee yourself boxing, ideally? Bueno, eh, Campeón, habías dicho que eh, vos tenés muchas cosas por, eh, que todavía querés conseguir, pero a la misma vez, el boxeo es un deporte brutal. Entonces, lo que yo le sí. quiero saber es si tenés un plazo en mente de, de por cuántos años más te gustaría permanecer como, como boxeador. Bueno, le, 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 bueno, mientras yo me sienta bien en el boxeo y, si, y siga ganando y siga teniendo triunfo y todo me siga yendo bien, si pienso que puedo seguir boxeando. Cuando yo vea que ya las cosas no son como antes, que estoy pasando mucho trabajo para ganar a la gente, para ganar a los muchachos jóvenes que ven, ya ahí sí tomaré una decisión en irme el día de mañana, ¿no? Uh, it's really about how how I feel, and I feel that I can still do a lot of winning, that I can have a lot of success, and I haven't set any any time frames any time frames for myself. Now, when I when whenever it is that I start feeling like it's not the same, that training is a drag, or that some some up and coming youngster got the best of me, then that will be the time to consider it. But right now. It's it's not on my mind. With your current opponent, Greg Vendetti, um, I, I was curious before the matchup. Um, did you know much about him? Did you kind of go on fact finding missions to find out more about him? And more. what's your opinion of him as a as a boxer? Eh, sobre tu oponente este sábado, Vendetti, eh, lo, lo, lo estudiaste ya? Hiciste algún tipo de de misión exploradora sobre sobre lo que quieres saber sobre él o nada. No, eso, eso, eso lo, lo, lo voy a saber el mismo sábado. Como estoy cansado de decirle a, a, lo, a los medios de prensa, no me gusta ver videos de los, de los boxeadores cuando que van a pelear conmigo, solamente lo estudio el primer round en el ring y ahí veré lo que tengo que hacer. Uh, I really haven't, I really haven't seen Vendetti uh, at all, really. I, as, as I, as I tell people, I really don't like to see uh, to, to to see or study video of my future opponent. To me, the studying comes starting in the first round once we start uh, exchanging punches in the ring. Um, last question on my end. As far as the current reigning uh, other champions out there, um, not looking past this opponent, but um, do you feel like based on who's out there right now, that, that you could beat any one of them on any given day? Do you feel like all those titles are up for grab and that, that you have a legit shot at, at, at taking any of them or all of them? Would you like to be undisputed again? Uh, bueno, sin, sin saltear la pelea este sábado, o sea, sin, sin subestimarla, y considerando a todos los otros campeones defensores que hay en tu categoría, ¿Sentís que sos superior a todos los otros campeones de este momento y que puedes volver a ser el campeón unificado sin disputa de, de tu peso? Claro que sí puedo, claro que sí puedo ser el nuevo campeón en disputa de mi peso sin ningún tipo de problema. Hay buenos boxeadores en la división, ¿no? Pero bueno, los boxeadores que están ahora mismo en la división, ninguno han peleado conmigo todavía, ¿entiendes? Entonces cuando los pelean conmigo, ahí verá quién, ahí, ver, ahí veremos qué pasa, ¿no? Of course, absolutely. I believe, uh, I firmly believe that I can be an undisputed champion once again. However, most of the most of the other champions that you mentioned, who are great boxers on their in their own right, they haven't fought against me yet. So it remains to be seen how that how that could pan out. But I definitely feel that I could come out on top against anybody, anytime in a, in a division that is really competitive. Erzani, thank you very much, and, and best of luck come Saturday. Thank you. Muchas gracias y suerte el sábado. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, if you have any questions, please press star 1 on your telephone keypad. Again, that's star 1 for questions. Our next question will come from Carlos Toro of Fan Game Media. Fight, excuse me, Fight Game Media. Carlos, your line is now open. 
Hi, Eddie Zlandi. Thanks so much for taking time to talk to us. You know, uh, coming from your last fight, you scored the knockout win against Ramon Alvarez, and it was your first knockout win by that point in two and a half years. Did that win kind of give you a little more confidence heading into the next fight after the wars that you had with Brian Castaño and Jared Hurd? Tu knockout a Ramón Álvarez fue tu primer knockout en, en casi dos años y medio y que si eso te devolvió algo de la confianza que quizás habías perdido por tus, pele por tus peleas con Castaño y con Jared Hurd? No, 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 el knockout se dio solo. El knockout se dio solo. Yo no tuve, yo no tuve ningún problema con Castaño, ni, ni, no he perdido ninguna confianza ni con Castaño ni con Jorge Hurd. ¿Entiendes? Eso fue una, una pelea muy importante que se dio y, ya, y fue así. El knockout se dio solo. Uh, well, I never, I never lost any any confidence. If that's what you're thinking, to me, it's it's really about staying up top with my confidence, and and I never wavered, regardless of what the circumstances may have been before or after that fight with Alvarez. You know, I, I don't want to, you know, ask him to sort of look past Greg Vendetti, but. Obviously, the 154-pound division is still very, very loaded, and obviously you got Jermel Charlin, Jason Rosario fighting in a unification, and there's still plenty of big names out there, 154 pounds, including Jared Hurd. Is that uh, is a rematch against Hurd something that he'd be interested in if he doesn't get a title fight uh, if he wins on Saturday? Bueno, de vuelta, sin, sin eh, subestimar ni saltear a a la pelea que tienes este sábado contra Vendetti, él dice que esta, esta división de 154 libras es como vos dijiste, muy competitiva con, con Charlo, con Rosario y también con Heard si eh, tú considerarías una revancha con Heard después de este sábado ya mi equipo ya mi equipo le, le habló a Heard ya mi equipo le escribió a Heard y, y Heard dijo no. ya mi gente de, de Cuba Junior y, y mi gente le preguntaron y ellos dijeron que no ok Yo, aparte de eso, yo, Pacho, hey, yo, estoy, yo, estoy, yo estoy abierto a pelear con cualquiera de la división. Yo nunca he dicho que no. Si ustedes se pueden ver mi historial, mi récord, que yo he peleado con los mejores boxeadores de la división, haciendo 54 libras. Uh, my people actually uh, have talked to her already. They reached out to him for a rematch, to, to him and his people for a rematch, and he said no. I am willing and able to fight anywhere, anytime against anyone in the division. But my again, my people they they reached out to Hertz Camp. They said no, uh, but I'm open to a rematch against him any time that that may be that, that may be possible. Thanks, Eric Landi, and best of luck on Saturday. Thank you. All right, Ray. this time we want to go ahead and welcome in and go ahead and give final comments to Edislandi Lada as he prepares for his matchup coming up against Greg Vendini, where he will defend his Super Welterweight Championship, PBC, live on Fox, this Saturday night, 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific time, presented by Premier Boxing Champions and promoted by TGB Promotions. Edislandi, final comments. Erislandi, comentarios finales, algo que quieras que la gente sepa, mensaje a los fans, lo que vos quieras. No, quiero mandarle un saludo a todos los fans, a toda, a toda, a toda la gente fanática de Boxeo, que gracias por el apoyo y gracias por, por tenerme aquí pendiente en el canal. Este, nada, solamente le diré que, que me estoy en tremenda condición, tengo tremenda forma forma física y para dar lo mejor de mí el día del sábado 29 de agosto. Uh, first of all, I want to thank the fans all over the world that that uh, are going to tune into the fight. And I want everyone to know that I am in great shape and feeling outstanding, ready to put on a show on Saturday. All right. Thank you very much to Erez Landi Lada. Thank you very much to Martin for the translation. Thank you to all the fighters in our main event at Islandi Lada, Greg Vendetti, Caleb Truex, and Alfredo Angulo. Don't miss Saturday night's event, 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific.